Okay, this video I'll talk about uh, how to prepare your research proposal. Okay, so research proposal mainly there are three important chapters. The first chapter is the introduction. Okay, I'm gonna put it down. And the second chapter would be the, your literature review. Third important chapter would be your research methodology. So we we'll start off with the first chapter, which is on the introduction. Uh, I would expect to see that each time you want to start an, a chapter, all right, you always start with an overview. So in this uh, overview section, it will just be a one short paragraph um, explaining what we expect to read in this particular chapter okay so meaning to say in chapter 2 as well you will start it off with an overview overview of the chapter right in no need to be very long just a short uh, paragraph or two okay then for chapter 1 introduction we we'll start off with 1.2 which is the here we'll talk about the background of your work. Okay, background of your project. Okay, so if your project is about um, solar, right, solar energy, then you need to give a very general uh, background of what uh, what exactly is um, solar energy and then how what is what are the latest. Uh, updates and progress in the field all right but eventually you need to um, narrow down your background okay you start off with something very generic very wide very broad all right but eventually you need to narrow down towards the end of your background all right you need to narrow down to the specific work problem specific scope of solar that you are working on Okay, so that is very important and for background we usually just expect like maybe one or two paragraphs would be enough. Okay. So from background, it should lead us to the problem statement. Okay. So after having read through what, what was the background of your work, uh, what is the, the broad overview of your work, then we need to identify what exactly is the problem that you're working on right each research is conducted to solve a problem right so in the case of your work so what exactly is the problem that you are trying to solve are you trying to make um, solar energy to be cheaper are you trying to um, what you are you trying to improve the efficiency of a certain system right so so all these problems, right? Each research topic should only have one problem statement. Okay, so this one problem statement need not be very long. It could be just one paragraph, all right? But it has to state very, very clearly what exactly is the problem that you're working on. Okay? And once you have for a uh, crafted a very clear problem statement then the next one is very easy next one is for you to craft a research question right each project only has one problem statement and from the problem statement you only have one research question so this research question is is an actual question right that you will end with a question mark but by answering this question, right, you are solving the problem that you have identified in your problem statement. Okay, so this is the significance of this research question. Right? It is a question, yes, right? And if you answer this question, you are solving that problem that you have identified. But you need to take note that when you craft your research question, it cannot be something which can be answered easily right by just googling right by just doing a very 
brief online or Google search or Yahoo search or you call it, right? To answer this question, you need to conduct a research, a proper, a thorough research, right, to answer this particular question. So that is what is meant by research question. It is more than a question, right? It requires research to answer that question, right? So some of the examples of uh, a mediocre kind of research question would be, uh, is earth round or is earth flat, right? So this kind of question, you can immediately answer yes or no, right? So that is not a research question because it is already known. The answer is already well established. So there's no need for us to conduct another research to answer that question. Okay, so one project, one problem statement, one research question and for an undergraduate level kind of final year project, we usually expect only about two to three research objectives. Okay, so you need to define very, very clearly what are the two to three objectives that you want to achieve, right? Um, towards the end of your, by the end of your project. Okay, so these objectives, they must be constructively aligned, right, to your research question and also to your problem statement. So 1.3 to 1.5, they have, they have to be in sync, right? They have to be really synchronized, right? I know your problem. I know your research question. So from your research question, I need to also be able to relate to your objectives. Okay, so in general objectives, we will start off with uh, two, right? To identify, to to define or to construct, uh, to conduct, to perform, to evaluate. It is always in this manner, right? Two followed by an action word. Okay, and for you to craft a very good set of objectives. You need to follow the SMART criteria. Okay, so what exactly is SMART? So the S stands for specific, meaning to say your objective has to be very specific. All right, one objective for one particular point. Right, it's not that in one objective you want to say that okay to evaluate and to verify. So that is already considered as two points or two actions right so one objective one action specific okay and it has to be measurable m stands for measurable right what it means by measurable so each of your objective has to be quantifiable all right you are not going to come up with uh, an objective like to calculate the level of handsomeness of me Right, so that is uh, pro probably not measurable, right? It is not quantifiable, okay? But if your objective is something like to compute the efficiency of a particular system, so that is measurable because we all know that efficiency is in terms of the output divided by the input multiplied by 100%. So that is measurable, right? Always, always try to be guided by quantities, right? At the end, what SI units that we can use to represent the outcome? Is it in terms of voltage, power, velocity, right? You know, you, I, I think you get a point, right? So specific and then measurable. Now, the ART or the ART is somewhat uh, belongs to the same cluster because they are quite similar, All right? So A would be achievable. Okay, depending on your on, on the timeline of your work, if it is an undergraduate final year project, uh, it will usually has to be completed within two semesters or one year, right? So make sure that the objectives that you have set is achievable within this time frame. Okay, and it has to be realistic and finally timely. Realistic means I don't think you expect to, you know, to 
to defy or to counter what Newton has proposed in, in his Newton's law of motions in one year. I don't think so. Right? So that is not realistic. And timely is what, as I want, what I have mentioned to you. For undergraduate, it is one year. For master's, it could be one and a half to two years. For PhD, three to five years. So your objectives has to be yeah, it has to be achievable within those time frame. Okay, so after you have crafted your objectives, then the, the next thing would be you, you want to see, right, what is the contribution of your work to the body of knowledge? So body of knowledge is strongly related to chapter 2, which is the literature, 